AD and DA converters. Uh, AD are analog to digital and to digital and DA digital to analog converters. And this first film will cover the converter basics. Uh, and the next films will cover DA converters and different AD converters. First of all, where do we find AD and DA converters in measurement systems? Uh, if we have a sensor on one side here, the data from the sensor is usually a change in resistance, capacitance or inductance. So we have to change that impedance to a voltage and we do that via, for example, a whetstone bridge. And then we go to the amplifier to make the signal stronger. Uh, usually done by some kind of operational amplifier and in many cases we also uh, filter the signal which means that we remove frequency components that uh, are undesired and keep other frequencies. Then we do the analog to digital. Remember the signal here is analog usually and uh, we want to convert that to a digital signal in order to use it here for data processing. So this is basically a computer and uh, the computers they use digital signals and also uh, if this data processing unit uh, communicates with another unit here uh, that communication is in most cases digital. Uh, but uh, when we want to use the processed data here uh, in some kind of actuator, something that tries to, to uh, have an influence on the process itself, then we often need to convert that to an analog signal again. So we have to run through a DA converter. The actuator here in this case is a heat exchange, but it could be a motor, robotic arm or whatever. Analog signals uh, have the information uh, contained in an analog signal is amount of amplitude with respect to time. So for example, if, if this sine wave here was to represent the temperature, is the amount of high temperature here and low temperature over there. So it's the amount of amplitude. Alternatively, the amount of frequency. Uh, that is, for example, for FM radio, is the different frequencies with uh, and the amplitude uh, associated with that. For digital signals, we have uh, the, uh, the information is uh, represented by so-called binary level levels, on or off. So, for example, a switch is digital. It can either be on or off. There is no uh, in-between. Uh, that is also often uh, written as 1 and 0, like, for example, this uh, example here, where the three ones really mean on, 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 for example, for three switches. Or even high, low. High uh, it means on, and low means off. If you combine a number of uh, binary levels or bits, you can uh, use that to form a number. For example, zero, zero, zero may represent uh, the, bi the, the, the numerical value zero. While, for example, one zero one zero may represent the number two, and uh, this may, for example, represent the number six, and so on. So you can use binary combinations in order to form numbers. The uh, digital signals uh, they are more powerful for processing, uh, so you get more powerful processing. It's easier to do. Uh, uh, arithmetic operations like summing, multiplication, div uh, dividing, and so on. 
a more flexible presentation you can present uh, in a more flexible way for analog signals you basically have the option of a gauge but for digital signals you have all sorts of numbers with text and numbers uh, and uh, a b uh, more convenient storage we all know how to store data digital data on for example a, a memory stick and it it has less noise sensitive transmission as long as you can distinguish a binary zero from a binary one it doesn't matter if the binary one is a bit noisy as long as you can distinguish it from a binary zero over there The schematic symbols for analog to digital converters uh, here. Uh, note that the uh, ADC, the analog digital converter, has a clock input. That is like a metronome in music. That, that is something that keeps the pace of the conversion. So whenever the clock changes from a low to, to a high, for example. Uh, whenever that happens in a train of s pulses like this, whenever it changes from a low to a high, the conversion takes place. So it only converts when it changes from a low to a high. So that clock here is used to keep the pace. The faster the clock, the more conversions per second. And then you have the digital number out here, on the other side. This is an alternative way to draw the same thing, with, with this uh, pentagon shape. Uh, in many cases, the digital signals here well, uh, are presented simply on one line only. One line. Where the data, this is presented in a parallel form, but if you present it in a serial form, you get like one binary combination, and then a few seconds later, the next combination, and so on. So, so you you get all the combinations on one line, and uh, the reason to do that is to make a component with a smaller footprint. The DIC uh, DAC digital analog converter has a digital input like that and one analog output. It doesn't necessarily have the clock because it can it can uh, convert from digital to analog on the fly. Whatever value you have here will be presented as an analog voltage on the output side at any moment. Uh, you also need a power supply, VCC, and usually a reference voltage which means if I have the, the, the span of the voltage from 0 to V ref, the number of bits tells us how many levels you divide this span into. If I have one bit, I can divide it into two regions, 0, 1. If I have two bits, I can divide it into four uh, levels, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Those are the four combinations with four bit, three bit, two bits, sorry, two, two bits. And if I have three bits, one, I now get eight levels, like 0, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven levels. <laughs>